Welcome to the screencast of API management in Service Mesh using Istio and WSO2 API Manager. I am Pobudu Gunatilaka. In this screencast, we will be deploying a sample service in Istio. Then we are going to apply API management using WSO2 API Manager. In this quick start guide, we will be quickly deploy WSO2 API Manager Analytics then WSO2 API Manager and finally WSO2 Istio Mixer Adapter. We have recently released Istio uh, APIM 1.0. This contains uh, artifacts you can use to deploy in Istio cluster. So the prerequisite for this um, uh, demo is you should have a Istio cluster uh, 1.10 or above and uh, you have you can download the artifacts from this uh, location this is the release version and when you come to the uh, bottom you can find this zip file so let's quickly deploy uh, starting from uh, API manager analytics I have a Istio cluster running in GKE so if we list down the ports in Istio system namespace you can see the ports related to Istio which is running so if you follow this guide first we'll uh, install uh, WSO2 API manager analytics so I'm going to copy this command so I have downloaded the zip file which contains those artifacts so we'll deploy analytics first then we can deploy API manager to deploy API manager we have to deploy the config maps so we have deployed the config maps as well so if we list down the ports in the WSO2 namespace we can see API manager analytics is running we can deploy API manager as well so we have deployed the config maps for API manager now we are going to deploy API manager Let's look at the ports running in WSO2 namespace. API manager and API manager analytics are running. Let's see how we can access API manager. We have exposed API manager as node port service type. To access API manager, we need one of the Kubernetes node IP to access API manager. Once we have that IP, we can add a ETC host entry with the uh, IP and WSO2 API is the host name so in this cluster if you go to the VM instances mm, based on your cluster name you can figure it out what are the uh, nodes that are running and you can use any of the node external IP to access let's copy that uh, IP address then let's uh, go to the terminal and uh, add a etc host entry so uh, if we check the etc host file i have already added the etc host entry like this so you can add a similar to this now if we access we can use a uh, WSO2 APM 32001 is the node port so you can use this URL so we will be redirecting to the login page you can use default credential admin admin to uh, login into the publisher likewise you can log into store as well let's deploy WSO2 Istio Mixer Adapter. In order to deploy that, we need to deploy the certificate of WSO2 API Manager 
for the stereo mixture adapter let's deploy that first finally let's deploy WSO2 adapter artifacts now we have already deployed WSO2 API manager analytics WSO2 API manager and finally WSO2 Istio mixer adapter so you can check on the Istio mixer adapter which is running as a pod in WSO2 um, in Istio system namespace so WSO2 adapter is the mixer adapter which is running let's take a sample user story where you have an online shopping store in this uh, shopping store you have several microservices written in different languages so if you take this uh, microservices collection you have a products microservice inventory and review and if you go deeper in the products microservice you have two different uh, resources one is products and other one is product slash product id and uh, if we are going to deploy these microservices and istio and we are going to expose only the products microservice so we can access from outside so let's uh, deploy and see how we can access if we go to the microservices sample repository you can find the artifacts related to the microservices you can use those to deploy in istio cluster so uh, before we deploy those so we have to enable uh, sidecar injection for the default namespace so i'm going to use this command and enable it so um, you're getting this error because i have already enabled uh, sidecar injection so uh, let's uh, deploy my um, uh, microservices in the stereo cluster so i have already uh, downloaded those artifacts and those are in my um, desktop location so i'm going to deploy uh, uh, microservice one by one so i'm going to start with inventory microservice so um, let's deploy the inventory then we can deploy um, review microservice finally we have uh, uh, we will deploy uh, the products version 1.0 so in this case in addition to the uh, service and deployment we have deployed the gateway and the virtual service for this microservice this is to access or the expose our microservice to the outside so we can use a uh, uh, these artifacts to access from outside to access from outside we need to identify the ingress gateway ip and the port so uh, we can use this command to get the ingress uh, gateway ip so i'm going to copy that use that so uh, our ip is this is the external ip so we can use this ip so uh, to identify the port we can use this command so based on the the platform you use if you are using docker for desktop those uh, ip and the port will be different so in this case 31380 is the uh, node port ip so um, this is the ip and the port so we have the products uh, resource running and we have exposed that uh, products uh, microservice so if we invoke it we can uh, access the products microservice so if you check on the other other resource we can get the product wise details as well so that's how we can uh, deploy a microservice and istio and then access from outside so in the next section let's see how we can apply api management for the this microservice 
In order to apply API management for the microservice, we need to create an API for the microservice. So let's uh, log in into the publisher portal. You can use admin admin credential to log in. in. Let's create a new API. So I'll call this uh, API as product API and uh, store as the context version 1. In this case, I'm going to add the product products as the as a resource. So we had uh, two resources, one called products and another one called product slash uh, product ID in this microservice. So I'm going to add those uh, my resources. Let's go to the next implementation uh, stage. In this case, this is a very vital uh, step. We need to specify the endpoint URL. So in this case, our microservice is uh, products. Uh, so um, the URL should be look like as this. So products is the microservice which we are out in traffic and uh, default is the namespace which the products microservice is deployed so the svc cluster locals are coming from uh, those are like the fully qualified uh, service name for this uh, particular microservice so so we can specify our microservice endpoint like this so let's uh, specify uh, subscription tier unlimited uh, default and those are like uh, default one so we'll add a, a scope called uh, product id so um, the idea here is that the uh, access token should have this product id scope to access the product id or the second resource in our case so we have added the product id scope for that admin role now we are going to assign that to this particular resource so we should need the product id scope to access the uh, this particular resource so let's save it and publish once we publish this uh, you are no longer able to access the microservice which you were accessing from the beginning so uh, we can check this so if it's try to invoke it we are getting the missing credential which is coming from the wso2 uh, adapter handler so uh, that's the basic scenario so we need now in order to access this particular uh, microservice we need to get an access token let's see how we can get an access token let's uh, go to the store in the store let's log in in we can use the default credentials as well so we have this uh, product uh, api so th there are two ways we can uh, access this uh, particular uh, api we can use a jwt token uh, or a o2 uh, token so first uh, we'll try the jwt token let's uh, go to the application in this uh, let's create an application called jwt app and we can choose the token type as jwt we'll add that now uh, we need to subscribe to the api let's select the api and then we select the app and we subscribe with the default here now if we view the subscription we can see our subscription now let's uh, create a uh, generate an access token now if you copy this and invoke it let's see how we can invoke we can add a header call authorization and the value uh, is pair and we can copy that so let's invoke the products 
yes now we can access it but uh, if we try to access from uh, 101 uh, the next resource we are not able to access because in this token we do we did not specify a scope now to access let's uh, specify a scope product id and let's regenerate a jwt token let's copy that and if we use that we should be able to access the products uh, 101 the other resource so that's how we can use the jwt to um, invoke the products microservice now let's look at how we can use an auto token to access the products uh, microservice so let's uh, create an application so we call that as uh, auto app We'll keep the token type as O2. Let's uh, go to the API and select the O2 application and subscribe to the application. Now, if you look the subscriptions, you can see the your product API. Now, let's generate a product uh, token. So I'm um, giving the product ID scope for generating the token as well. So we have generated the token. I can copy the token. Let's uh, use that token to invoke the product microservice. We can successfully access product microservice one uh, with the uh, product ID resource and also we can try the products microservice as well so with this token also we can invoke the microservices now let's look at the analytics uh, look like in API publisher so we can check on the API usage so the product API you have two subscription and total hit count is a uh, five with the same user jwt and o2 so apart from that you can get the other analytics uh, details as well so the um, total backend time those details can be achieved from these graphs as well so that's how the analytics works in uh, uh, api manager if we check the jwt validation process when the request comes to the backend service first it will uh, hit the annoy proxy from there it will call the mixer to check the policy check from there it will call the wso to mixer adapter mixer adapter will validate the jwt if it is successful then the request will go to the backend or the service so if we in the jwt token validation and the token contains the scope and some other information like subscribed apis so in the token validation process subscription validation and uh, scope validation will be happen and if you take the o2 to uh, token validation process same as uh, to jw token validation process envoy will do the policy check with the mixer and the mixer will uh, call the wso2 mixer adapter from the adapter it will call the wso2 api manager or the wso2 key manager to validate the token so the wso2 api manager or the key manager could be running in kubernetes or it could be running in a different environment where it is accessible from wso2 mixer adapter so once the validation is done it will uh, go to the back or this go to the service based on the uh, success or failure result if you take the analytics process ennoy will be sending those uh, uh, analytics data to the mixer and mixer will be uh, uh, sending those analytics uh, data to the mixer adapter these things will happen in asynchronous way so um, 
from the mixer it will call it will send those all the analytics information to the wso2 api analytics server and there it will summarize and those information will be available in wso2 api manager publisher and store so that's how the analytics works thank you very much for joining the screencast